I cannot tell you how many different times I've ran through scenarios about getting divorced. And if it wasn't for Nikki, whenever she filed for divorce, I did not have the balls to do what I wanted to do for four years, and that was leave her. So I became somebody that she wanted to leave. You want that great family, you want this, you want that, but you can't rely on other things or other people to be perfect. You have to create those opportunities. Guess what? That means you got to work for them. If I keep going on those lines, I'm just going to keep fulfilling the frustration. We're not focused enough on what is immediately in front of that I can make flourish today. We try to figure out these rough spots. And if you do yours, because I can't do yours, you can't do mine. But if we both realize we have them and we both agree to work on them to hit that goal that we both agreed on when we said I do, then we can support each other. So awesome. We got that cracking. So yeah, let's dig into this. Let's. All right. Why don't. So if we, we all know about happy, what? Happy wife, happy life, happy life, right? Look, the teeth yeah. got in the way. Happy wife, happy life. I'm gonna see if I can catch that on video and use it as a little outtake where my lip got snagged on my tooth. Oh. A lot of people know. don't experience that. I thought because they were so white, that changed the exposure of the camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> changed the autofocus. <laughs> yeah. Happy wife, happy, happy life. Wife, happy life. That's true. But what we don't realize is like you said, you went down a certain path. You're getting upset by it. You're finding yourself. Why can't this? Why? In, in, no. when, I believe a real man, when he hears that going on in his head, once he's awake to the th things that he's saying, why can't she? Why isn't she? So you ask those questions, you realize you got down, then you realize they, they came together and you having that awareness too helps you make it a, a, a better situation and you're enhancing yourself, you're evolving, you're growing. What is but that, that doesn't, doesn't happen that? for everybody. Yeah, but that doesn't happen for everybody, does it? Right. So what are they missing? What is that? It doesn't happen to almost anybody. Yeah, I don't know. And I, you know what? Actually, here, here's my take on it. Because here's where I came from. Before it was about my own self-evolution or my own becoming better, working on myself as a project. A lot of it was pride. Um, it was my ego. It was, no, you know, this is who I am. Why should I change who I am? Well, you could look at it that way. I yeah, why should I change? Nobody. Yeah. Right. Why should I change who I am? This is me. This is me. Take it or leave it. But if you're not changing, you're not growing, right? So when I looked at it in that perspective, I think that's what it took for me was getting rid of the ego, checking the ego at the door and realizing like, hey, if you don't grow, you're always going to remain in the same environment, right? You want to change things. Like I, I last time we talked, I talked to you about growing in my environment, leaving Detroit, leaving Michigan, moving to Los Angeles. Well, in essence, it's the same thing. If you want to grow as a person, as an individual, you have to take a long, hard look at yourself and see where your shortcomings are, where your opportunities are, and what you can do to better yourself. Not only for yourself, but people around you. You want that great family. You want this. You want that. That's all fine and dandy, but you can't rely on other things or other people to be perfect and line those things up you have to create those opportunities and for you to create those opportunities guess what that means you got to work for them that means you either got to go to work that means you got to go to work on yourself whatever that is you're in control of that so for and you me have, if, go ahead. Did, did you notice i don't mean to cut you off but you you made a great point and i want to like you said you you left let's just say detroit for la yeah so you have, you can't go to that better place, that better life, that better result, even the vision of you, yourself with your body, your career, your, your, anything that you're doing, your business, unless you leave where you are yeah. and everybody yeah. has to figure out where they are. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. yeah. And that, yeah, that's a great metaphor. That's a great way to put it in perspective because you're, you're at a certain place, whether it's, let's say like, let me get my train of thought back is from going from Detroit to Los Angeles, right? I wanted to leave because I wanted to grow, outgrow my environment. I wanted to learn more. Well, when you take a deep, hard look at yourself in the mirror and say, Hey, this is what I need to work on. Whether it's 
being more empathetic towards other people, whether it's uh, yelling less. Yeah. Yelling, whatever the case is, working on my temper, working on understanding or working on whatever. The hardest part for me was saying, okay, get rid of the ego. Fuck all that. Like you want to be a better person. This is what you got to do. And it was easier for me to do that. I think that was it. That's the thing. I learned it. I learned it early because there's no one else to impress. I'm looking at myself in the mirror and say, Hey, no one else needs to know what you're working on. This is between you and me and talking to the person in the mirror, right? This isn't about your best friend's not going to know your family's not going to know what you're working on. You need to work on it yourself. And I think if, as long as you can get rid of that pride and that ego and forget what other people think, that's when you can experience true growth. Beautiful. I'm glad I didn't interrupt with my question because I, I'm learning more and more the more I talk to you. If I just hold that question probably 50% longer than I want to, you answer it. Yeah. So okay. that's really good because was, that, that was what I was going to say. Like, Because that's the difference right there. You get confronted with your ego. You said, I'm leaving that. That's not what I'm serving. That's not what I'm going to develop and evolve. But most people choose that. They want to defend that. Defending their position, whatever, right? Yeah. And we imagine you have areas of that for yourself still. Of course. I do. Of course. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really special when people come around or you meet someone else, a spouse, and they come to the table for the most part willing to be like that too or at least willing to work on themselves. Right. Why is it, why is it they're afraid? Why is it when you get shown something like, that's interesting to me? Like, what are your sticking points? What is it that doesn't allow you to realize that your environment is not going to change? Your environment may change, but you have so much more control of changing your environment or changing the person you Amen. are to change that environment. Like, what is it that I think a lot of people may realize it, but they're afraid to do it, afraid to change as a person, afraid to, to humble themselves, to, to, to learn to be different than who they are. Maybe it's emasculating for them to show more emotion. Um, and those are the guys, like, especially the ones that were, are willing to take a look, because those are there too, the tough guys that are willing to look. That dude over there, what, what's that dude doing? Mm-hmm. Why is he holding hands with his wife? They're in their 50s. What's up, right? Because most of the time, this is what I know, dude. You go to parties, and if the longer people have been together, typically the less time they talk to each other at the party. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed this? Just at a gathering, it could be a barbecue. Like the less time they've been together, the I... closer in physical proximity they stay. Yeah. And so I was like, we, we became like that. So lately, more and more, it's back to some of the the flirty, lovey-dovey at the volleyball game. Nikki's laying on my lap. Yes. And see, something different, something subtle like that that's... That got away from us. Yeah. And that's so great. I just, you know what? That's, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's such a great, (laughs) that's so great that you said that because Alicia and I have been going on a lot more dates lately. Because when you start having kids and you live that family life and you're working and whatever else, you get in a routine, right? It's just the same thing over and over again. Like we said, we're going through the motions. Time goes by and it has an impact on your life, right? You start changing as a person. You still got to get back to you. And for us, we made it a thing that we said at least once a month, twice a month if we can, we're going to go out on dates. Where it's just her and I acting like little kids again. And we just go out and we're just us. We're flirty with each other. We're like, I'm proud to have her next to me. You know what I mean? And like, we're, we act like we did when we were younger. But knowing what we've been through over these last 20 years and still being able to take act like we were just makes it even more special. Sweet. Yep. Like, I was waiting for the word sweet. Yeah. Same thing. It's, uh, it's, yep. 
it, it's amazing. And like, we went out, I don't know. There's a security to it. No. Yeah. Yeah. That, there is like that security that you feel. Cause I, I was a sappy type as a teenager. Like I, I was chasing and just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. show me attention so I can mm -hmm. you know, have some peace of heart, peace of mind. But no, I, I remember those insecurities, dude. Like I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't want that life for anything mm -mm. because there, there is a deep seated security now that it's, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. And again, that can even be when you're at each other, like cats and dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like for me, we just, like when we have big issues, right? So we had an issue. We might've touched on this last, last time we spoke, but, there's something going on um, that we were going through. And then we went out on a date like we do once a month, once every or a couple weeks or whatever. And to be able to hash it all out, to be able to air it all out like adults and whatever, but like you're still having fun and just having that time set alone. So like I always say like people who have kids, people who are like in a relationship, but you're both working, you need time to like step away and not be adults you have to go out and you have to relax and you have to enjoy each other's company Pretend. and sometimes sometimes it's going to be hard because if you're not used to doing that it's going to be awkward at first i remember the first time we started going out on dates again we we're sitting across from the table at a restaurant and we didn't know what to talk about so we bury ourselves in our phones because it was foreign to us because if yeah. the kids weren't yelling or we weren't yelling we didn't know what the what to do anymore <laughs> You know what I mean? So we, yeah. like I said, we'll, we'll be on Facebook. We'll be like, oh, I just see this video. But now everything comes so fluid. And like, I look forward to spending time with my wife because like, I value her. Like she's so beautiful to me again. Like it just, it, yeah, it wasn't like that at some points. You know what I mean? It was, yep. man, I don't know. My life's changed a lot, buddy. Yeah. Um, from no, where I was to where I am now, it's uh, completely different. I will tell you this. There was many years. We've been together for 11 years. I cannot tell you how many different times I've ran through scenarios about getting divorced. Um, how I would do it. The effect it would have on the kids. But I, I don't want that. It's, it's easier to give up, right? It's easy to give up on something. Say, oh, I'm going to start over. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But when you value something that you have, like I value my wife. I love my wife. I, I value my children. Like I won't give them up for anything. I just, I don't even know where I was going with this conversation, but um, like I've had those thoughts, but sometimes you got to realize, Hey, you know what? Maybe I need to change and maybe it's not your fault, right? Like I can't give you specifics, but I can tell you there's things that I've had to change, whether it was my outlook, my perspective, my, whatever it is, I've had to change even though I didn't want to, because it just wasn't cohesive with the relationship, whether it was cohesive with my wife, with the kids or whatever. And that's what that's what they say you have to sacrifice sometimes and you know relationships are fluid things are they're up they're down they're all around and you got to be able to to change as a person and to want to do it i mean if you're going to be stubborn and you only want to think about yourself guess what you're probably going to end up with yourself or even worse you're going to end up with someone who doesn't want to be with you and you don't want to be with them and you're going to be living in your own hell earlier remember i said you talked about the paths Mm -hmm. you were on that path. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. And it was selfish and you realize, okay, what can I do yeah. to serve her? And now I'm, I'm going to lift her up and now our paths converge, right? And you could see where it was leading and you, you backtracked. I, I loved how you said that because- I've never, by the way, I'm sorry to interrupt. I've never said that ever because it just, it's happening now as we speak. She doesn't even know that. And so when she watches this, <laughs> she, I like, she's going to tear up at that part. She's going to cry because I almost did because it was, like I said, it, it's been eye opening. And this just happened to me like yesterday, dude. 
like I thank God yesterday or the day before at night before I went to bed that I was able to see that it was it was like that was a growth moment for me I've gone through many growth moments in life and the most recent one was like yesterday or two days ago like yeah so your thing was just to recap it was she you had talk about expectations early in the relationship time goes by that ain't shaping up that way and then she's going down this path and then family goals are being missed priorities are being skipped or not met yeah yeah by both parties whatever there's expectations on both sides that are not clear uh, that's the mud right we're now we're in the mud and then you, but you realized you took your eyes off yourself was the key and you can you simply considered her that's all you considered her it was if that easy would you agree that that's like kind of where was, it started yeah yeah and like by you recapping the story and telling it in your words. How I hear it, yeah. It, it was literally that fucking easy. Okay. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't Good. let myself Time do stamp it. way too long into the conversation. No, I'm going to, because that, that, this is powerful. This is, it's a powerful note. You simply considered her. And we'll just talk to the macho guys for a minute. The big bad boys. Yeah. If you just stop for a minute to consider her, how much more could you get what you wanted? Let me just sell to the selfish guy. The selfish person, I'll turn on the sales skills. How much more would you get of what you wanted if you made sure that happy wife is in place? Right? Um. I'm at a loss for words because <laughs> here's where I came from. I've kind of always had that notion that that's what needed to be done. But I still relied on the fact, like I said earlier, I shouldn't have to change. I shouldn't have to consider what she needs. She should consider what I need. Okay, so you took even a more firm position than turning away. Yeah. Yeah. More firm. Way more firm because which is of, harder to change. Way harder to change because you're expecting someone to be molded for you for and you. your expectations and whatever else. But it's not the marriage isn't this. It's yeah. This. Yeah, exactly. Right? <gasps> I don't have my ring on. <gasps> but yeah. How can I be Facebook perfect? Yeah, same. Uh -huh. but like you know what? So that's a good analogy, but like, here's the thing. It's not just this. It's not just this because it's always changing. It's always manipulate. It's always, like you said, it's, it's always shifting. Always. Yeah. The kids are three and five, but tomorrow they're nine and they're, they're nine and yeah. 11 and your life is different. Yeah. It's different dynamics. Yeah, absolutely. So you got to be able to like, it's hard, man. Being married is hard. But Having kids is hard. Him. Why? I, yeah. I can say because I'll tell you this, I can't even give credit to myself that I considered her. I give, I don't want this to sound cliche, but as cliche as it sounds, I give all thanks to God because this whole time, these last five or six months, what I was going through, I didn't see the bigger picture. I didn't see, I didn't see it as she needs to focus on her studies. She doesn't need to worry about the house. She doesn't need to worry about the kids. She doesn't need to worry about anything. That's why you lost your job because of COVID. That's why I'm not giving you another job. That's why you're going to be Mr. Mom and the head of the household. I can't even, I can't take credit for that shit, dude. Like it happened and it took me fucking, what's today? October 9th. And it happened on May 1st, yeah. April 31st. It took me that long to realize, oh my God, thank you so much for opening my eyes and letting me see the journey I was on, the road I was on, as much as I hate it, as much as whatever. And I just now realized it. And That's awesome. I love how you state it and you give glory to God with the man. It is the ninth, by the way. Yeah, it's on my calendar on the bottom. That's why I looked at it. It All took right, me that long to be, realize it. I must be living on Saturday because I just get so excited for UFC fights. 
<laughs> I want it to okay, be the you said you were watching them tonight. No, not tonight, bro. Tonight? No, tonight's uh, something that I would not do if I wasn't watching it with my brother. And my brother loves his Miami Heat. What I wanted to talk about was to share with you this realization that I had because you're not alone, bro. I find myself getting excited. So that realization about the path, that idea came from the fact that I went out exercising again after my race. And it was one of the best weekends I've had in my whole life. Monday came, and along with Monday came the letdown, the emotional letdown, right? Like, so you're there, and you're like, oh, man, that was really fun. And now, okay, we're back to the work week. My work weeks are pretty good. Like, I, there's no complaints about, you know, my work days. But except the focus isn't where it was supposed to be when we had this expectation in March of starting this community, and then we launched this community in the summer, and, like, where the hell did you go? Like, you guys were really active. This is the stuff in my head. And I'm going out for my exercise and I'm thinking more and more about the school that she's in and how often she's sitting at that table and forget about the time there. Mm -hmm. When she's on her way to the gym to go teach a class or she's doing something else with school or doing a meal prep with lady, like, but when she's doing something not related to this, she's thinking about those things. Or if she's on her way to work, she's thinking about the school assignments that are due every single Sunday. And how am I going to get this done when I got these kids that we're trying to show home, that we're homeschooling, at least we think until Christmas time. And I'm looking at this going, at, to no fault of our own is progress in the mud. But at the same time, it's the immediate pro progress of today that feels like it's in the mud because the stuff that's being developed for tomorrow, i.e., next year, the year after, the three to five year plan is killer. It's killer. But I've already made the announcement. I've opened the website. Like we've taken yeah. money. So that goes in my head. So then I go, okay, marriage course. Sometimes you got to know when the freaking ship is burning to the water and jump off of it and get on another ship. Sir Oliver Perry, I think was his name. His whole command in the, in, the, in the Great Lakes Wars of Lake Erie, War of Lake Erie, Sir Oliver Hazard Perry, his whole command, don't give up the ship. Famous story. Don't give up the ship. Don't give up the ship. Guys were getting cannonballed and burned into the water, dying with their ships. This dude, I think he was 27, dude, at the time. This guy, he's like, they're all dying. He's like, F them. He jumps out into the water, blood and like he's covered, like he's in war, bro. His ship is going down. Dude jumps out, goes, gets another ship, and starts banging away against, I think it was the French that were battling us, right? Like, don't mess, don't mess, don't get me on super specifics. Here. Yeah, yeah. The message is relayed, hopefully. He gets on another ship, bangs away, and they win that battle. Sir Oliver Hazard Perry said, F your ship. We got to win the freaking battle, man. We got to win the war. When that came into my mind, I let myself off the hook a little bit about the timing of the marriage course. And only for the sake of sanity so I could consider anything else. And while I'm on these runs and I'm going on my bike ride and I'm doing these different things, I'm thinking about her and where she's at and why can't she? And I can't believe she didn't freaking tell me about this. And it still came up in my mind, you know, all this stuff. Sure. And I'm like, I know it's good, but we had a plan. Like, that's good. We had a plan, and I'm tired of plans restarting. I'm tired of the plans restarting. We're too good to be in this position. We're too skilled. We're too developed. We're too evolved. We're too powerful. What we have to give away matters too much. It's too important. Why are we being stifled? <laughs> Why? And I'm like, and here it came. It's been about, remember I told you the office, like, I don't know if I mentioned this to you. I was, it was in the very beginning of her registering for school. It was like, wow, knees knocked out. We're not recording any courses this day or maybe this week. So, but what came to my mind was, okay, great. Awesome. This is the spot you're in. What can you do? 
Mm -hmm. What can you do? Well, I can get a background set up and get that nasty whiteboard out of here and get that gray wall gone and, and start working on a presentable studio. That was the first big step. But the one that came even after the race was like, okay, my role right now, I'm, I'm realizing I'm support staff. I'm support staff. But I'm in the key leadership position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do I need to do to help her be the partner that I need to be for myself and freaking blessed, of course, because that's the, the business agenda. That's our job that we're, we, we're creating a job, right, for ourselves. And that's fine. But more importantly, that's going to help her be the woman that people who want to get into freaking blessed or checking out freaking blessed want to see, need to see, need to hear from the person that she needs to be. And that means helping her flourish. And so more and more, and it's, it's still very fresh. So we don't have a groove yet because just last night, she told me that she feels like I'm hovering. That's the word she used. Now she has not heard this revelation yet. I've not uh. shared it with her. <laughs> why? I don't know why I haven't shared it with her after 11 days. Yeah. But here it's coming. It's coming right now. That's why more guys need to talk. Stop being little chicken shits. Yeah. Start talking to their buddies and just being real. Yep. And they can start here lurking for a while. We'll, we'll take the shame. <laughs> Absolutely. There's <laughs> plenty know. more. There's plenty more stories that I got. So, so yep. <laughs> so as that started happening, I'm like, okay, got this. I got it. Guess yeah. what happened for the first time ever? Nine and 10 year old or eight and nine year old, their screens are gone forever, at least indefinitely. They have no promise of ever getting a screen back in their hand. They had little iPods. They had the old little iPhone that we didn't use anymore that we let them use for music without cell service. They don't neither. Our 14 year old and 17 year old have actual iPhones or phones. Uh, but the, the two boys, eight and nine, were using like a, an old iPod and the, the, the cell phone on Wi-Fi only, right? That's what they had. Gone. Tablets. Oh, Minecraft, Pokemon, whatever. Else, gone. Everything's gone. It's been gone for two weeks. They were grounded. The eight-year-old today is 15, 16 days of grounding. Actually, 17 because he was grounded a week and a half, two and a half weeks ago on a Wednesday, like all day. Eight years old, bro. Nothing. What can I do? Read. What else can I do? Go clean your freaking toilet. Yeah. These boys' attitudes, it's incredible. We didn't even have to cut their hair. <laughs> it's gorgeous. That's coming together. What else is happening? Hopefully, the stress in the house is lowering. Rough couple days to end the week. But we know that we're a team. So when teams get their asses handed to them in the first quarter or the third quarter or for a game or for a stretch and they're on a losing streak, what do they do? They step up. And I was thanking God for showing me that as I was like, really? Again? I got to be the big person again? And I, don't, and I don't mean just me be the big person. She's stepping up in ways that are very uncomfortable. She took two final exams today online this morning for the first half of the day, and they were relatively brutal on her like because she's not the school person. So she's finishing this nutrition, uh, this holistic nutrition degree. And I'm like, I asked her this week. She's like, I want to do this. I want to do this for meal planning. And I want to offer this in the community for this. Okay, cool. She's saying that. I believe God reminds me of that. Once I relieved of my own self-pity for a second out on my run, that's why I run and that's why I bike and that's why I make my body burn is because when my body burns, my spirit softens. That's what, like these ultra runners, they, they go to experience that pain so they can experience more peace. Mm -hmm. They're all running from something. Everybody who works out super hard, runs from something. We're lifting in the gym. We're, we're trying to squeeze the life out of something or squeeze it into something. We're always trying to work out something. That's why it's called work out because you're trying to work stuff out. I just made that up. I like it. Has anybody ever said that? I always feel like I'm trying to work stuff out. I like it. You just... You just built a bridge. You just built a road, dude. And I said, babe, you know what? I love that. She gave, gives me all the ideas that she had. She gave me all the materials. I went and made a design on them. They're on the website. They're, they're in the community right now. It's posted. It's the freaking blessed uh, first ever meal prep little plan. It's a little coaching package. That. 
you saw that yeah so like that was that was her idea and what you see on this on the website is me inside the membership area is what you see me producing out of that and like there's more value to add in there right yeah but the biggest thing is it's what we can do now it's what we can bring to the table now plus conversations like this where we don't need the ladies they've already done their job of providing us all the raw material mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know yeah so that's the realization uh... that i had and that's it, it it's almost identical to yours in terms of like the concept and i love it because it happened at a very similar time for both of us and neither one of our wives know and we're yeah. not really here about communicating <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my God! Why is both that? Of us, both of us are willing to have these conversations, and we'll take it to our wives. Like it, it'll. Yeah, happen. and you know what? And I'm glad we had this conversation because, had we not, I wouldn't have. I I mean, I came to a realization today. Like, I need to give her props. I need to give her props on what she's yep. doing, and. Yep. I don't do that enough. And yeah. Does she care numbers? about being complimented with words? Words <sighs> of affirmation. So we did that one study, another study, the quiz or whatever it is, right? Not an in-depth one about what your words of love or your the five love, love languages. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Gary Chapman's great book. Yeah. So she needs words of affirmation. She does. Yeah. For me, it was physical touch. For me, it was physical touch. For her, it was words of effort. I actually took a picture of her. We did it months ago. I need to appreciate her more. I appreciate her, but I, I never tell her how much I appreciate her. And it all comes down to my pride, my ego, because why couldn't have you have done this 10, 11 years ago? Why is this? Why is that? Yeah. But yeah. it always comes to that. But I. Well, that's only because you haven't let it go. Yeah. And that's I, all. And I, you know, I, that. I know. Yeah, absolutely. And you know yeah. what? That's funny you mentioned that because at one point during one of our dates, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, I even told her, I don't know if I'll ever be able to let it go because it's just something I wanted for both of us. Like I wanted us to be at a specific point in life, not just for me, but for both of us, for our family, for all four of us, right? And yeah, I haven't let it go, but I'm realizing what it takes to be a better man for me, what it takes to be a better man for my wife, for my kids. And it's like, you know, talking more, communicating more, learning more about myself, being able to let go of the pride, the ego and conversations like this, yeah. by having conversations with your boys and by being able to talk about it, by not being afraid or nervous or like, who gives a fuck? Like everybody's got their issues. Every, it doesn't your friends aren't going to be judgmental at least here we're not going to be judgmental we're gonna yeah we're gonna listen to you we're gonna hear about it and you know you want my advice i'll give you my advice you know what i mean i want your advice yeah i want you to give it to me so when we're able to let it go and be able to talk about it it's a lot healthier dude it's well and healthier. we both learn at the same time yeah it's, it's awesome that's what people don't get a lot of times like a lot of times I think people have a hard time sharing because if it feels like a weakness, that's why you're scared to share it. You're thinking the other person automatically is stronger than you and is going to yes. judge you or yes. doesn't have any yes. understanding for where you are. Yes. And it's All totally that. false. You put that in. That's what I was trying to say or trying to convey. You said it perfectly. Maybe Absolutely. Edgar, bro. <laughs> you, uh, you put it perfectly because we don't want to put ourselves in a position where we're second fiddle or we're not as dominant as you or whatever the case yep. is. Yep. And what we if my neighbor I don't want weak? Yeah. I don't want you to see my weakness. I don't want you to think I'm weak. That's what it is. And when you can let that go, you open up so many more doors. People, people are so much more inviting to you when you're able to do that. That's why to tie it back into the bully story, when I, I'm not afraid to I go out of my way to show my weakness because if it's going to make you feel more comfortable, I don't mind stepping down, humbling myself to raise you up because it's going to help you. And I've already been there. That's so why I don't smart. mind. I don't mind being down here again yep. because if it's going to help you, 
I'm all for it, dude. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it fits the bill or not, but like letting it go. One thing that I noticed about that is, and, you, and I'm bringing it up because you said the almost exact same way in our first talk with the wives. And it was, I had expectations for us and our family. I knew what I wanted for her, for me, for our kids. And I had a plan. By this age, we should be here. By this age, we should be here. And it all comes down to like, we had a plan. When I have a life partner who agreed to this plan, like, let's do it together. Do you, are you, how, like, was Alicia in bed with those same expectations? Did you clarify verbally, are we here? Are we here? Like a contract deal, right? Like, I, this is what I understand. For the marriage? This, the plans. The plans, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Uh, and it was we real? Were. It wasn't her submitting to your exertion? It was, she knew my expectations and she agreed to them. And I never wanted to force them on her because I said, if well, it's not going to work. For, for clarification, part of it was school. Mo well, majority of it was school. Because Did she it, want to do school for herself? Great question. The answer is no. That's what I'm saying. Did she share the heart? That's, that's, that's exactly what I mean. Okay. Same intention. So the ultimate goal was, the ultimate goal was I want to be able to take vacations any couple times a year without us having to worry about financially. Can we afford it? I want us to be able to buy whatever we want, whatever that number is. It doesn't matter what we make per year. I just wanted to be able to do what we want to do anytime we wanted to do it. But with that, I told her, don't forget what you just said. We're never, I want to do that. Hold on to that. Write that down if you need to, because I have to, I have to stop it for a second. You want to take a two minute break? Totally. Cause I got to pee and I'm squeezing hard. Yeah. Hold me on. too. Couple, yeah. Uh, oh, it's not I'm like, not going to forget, dude. This is uh... I hate to stop. All right, let's do it. All right. Already? My mom came over, dropped off some stuff, and the kids, and the kids, and the kids just got home with Lisa. Bring it back. It becomes so easy to be yourself when you don't give a shit about anything else. In terms of people's thoughts, you know? When you let go, not even let go, it is let go, but it's like letting go of a facade, a mirage. We think their thoughts matter. We think the yeah. Jones, it matters. It, I, you were talking about wanting to have some couple of vacations per year. I wrote down the note. Yeah. Like, like, not like we're worried about a quarter million a year. Yeah, but it, it was, um, it was, you'd ask me, like, were those, were those known in the relationship? Were, were they those? shared? Yeah. Yeah, from the heart. So I got to tell you, Yes, ish. And now that I think about it, because I always made it clear to her, the lifestyle I want for my kids, I'm not going to be able to do on one salary. I, I would have loved for her to stay home, not work, just take care of the kids. Like I said, I'm not going to make a quarter million dollars a year where we can save for two college funds, two weddings, retirement spend money on whatever we want it's just not going to happen so i told her i said you need to work i said i want my wife and i to work till we're 55 or so ish then retire get the kids out of the nest and retire and live whatever well we never had a plan on how that was going to happen i might have told her you need to work but i didn't say here's what you need to do, or she didn't know what she wanted to do or whatever the case may be. 
So when we finally realized she started off in nursing school, that wasn't for her, we did a couple other things, whatever. And then she found radiology and many of tens of thousands of dollars in debt later, she finally finished. Uh, recently got a job and everything, but she was never the school type, she hated school. The only reason why she did it was because of me, because of how much I pushed. And, uh, you know, I don't give her enough credit. I don't, at least I don't tell her enough how much I appreciate her. None of us do. Gave up. I still don't. I, we don't. Know, yeah. As a it's species, fun. we don't. Yeah. And it's like, because I want to hold a little bit of that power, I guess, or not give her all the power, whatever that is. I don't know. Um, it's not always sinister, bro. A lot of times men, I think, speaking for the whole, <laughs> the whole gender, it's like, we just think we know better. Yeah. For whatever reason, our dad, our grandpappy, we just think we know better. Yeah, you know, it, you know. I'm just saying that to encourage you to, because it's we've said this before here. It's so normal. It is. It's it so is. normal. And the hard, the hardest part is just facing it and realizing it and be able to let it go. Like realizing should... that everybody shares it. Yeah, that's that's why I always say why it's normal. We are a bunch of like abnormal people. I'm not normal. You're not normal. We talked, we realized this, but these things that we go through are normal. And, but the abnormal ones somehow seem to be a little bit happier and a little bit calmer, even though, like, even while we understand that we're messing up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we don't have it yet, and we don't know why we keep doing this thing. And when can this pattern break? But I'm like, let me just put it like this. If there's something on my heart right now, it's that like God wants us to know. And from my perspective, Jesus, I'm not talking about church or church people or denominations because I'm not the religious guy. But in my faith, like God wants us to know that it's okay like chill out if if you were supposed to be perfect i would have made you that way but i didn't adam i made you with really big teeth and i made you with toes that go crooked and they call them hammer toes is there any more insulting name of a medical condition than hammer toe i don't know but i have two on each foot like, you're not supposed to be perfect. That's why this matters so much. We're not. Like, we're not supposed to have all the answers. Either one of us, or even as a unit together, we're not supposed to. We go out and we read Gary Chapman and, and Dale Carnegie. And we try to figure out these rough spots because we realize if we smooth down those rough spots, and if you do yours, because I can't do yours, you can't do mine. But if we both realize we have them and we both agree to work on them to hit that goal that we both agreed on when we said I do, then we can support each other and working on those rough spots as we do it together as individuals privately and together for accountability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if, if it was supposed to be perfect, heaven's perfect. Heaven is the perfection. If we were supposed to be born into that, he wouldn't have created this cesspool to let us figure it out on our own to support each other while relying on him for faith as we work our way through it so we can change and grow these spirits that we were given. It's not a big deal. And I think if people understood that it was normal to everybody, like your address, dude, if the tough guy knew he'd chill out. If he knew that he came to a party, I don't care if it's in the streets and they're throwing down dominoes and cards and there's drive-by potential, or you're in some glass 
circulating restaurant a hundred stories above a major city. I don't care what dinner you're at. I don't care what evening you're having. If they knew, if the dude that showed up there knew that every dude in that place had insecurities and he's scared mm-hmm. shit of you too, mm-hmm. and what you think of him, that's why he pads his income. He tells the IRS the net income, but he tells the people at the party the gross income or what they promised him but didn't deliver. But he doesn't tell you that they didn't deliver. A little bit of my story. Not bitter at all, I promise. <laughs> Like, if we knew, dude, that everybody's dirty, it'd be a whole lot easier to come together and stop freaking getting divorced and wrecking kids when they're 13 years old looking for a dad, looking for a mom, like wrecking them. It's selfish as hell, man. It's so selfish. And if it wasn't for Nikki in 2000, five or six, whenever she first filed for divorce, we would have been one of those stories because I didn't have the balls. Mm -hmm. It's a fact of our story. I did not have the balls to do what I wanted to do for four years. And that was leave her. So I became somebody that she wanted to leave. Mm. That's how it happened. So as you're looking at that and you guys don't have it all smoothed out yet, know that Nikki doesn't even know that I've said like these things are going on in my mind, which I would think if she really understood what I'm saying today, like it's, it's, it's huge for us. Right. It's right. It's the next step to conquer until we get smacked in the face next week by something else Yeah. because it's going to come. But we are a team. We're an organization. And so <laughs> who do I need to be for the team? Bill Belichick to do my job right? Yep. And then it all comes back to that. And then you just keep going, knowing that nobody's perfect and get some people around you that aren't going to hurt you and take it every day, do what you can where you're at. Like, I don't know, it's not world hunger, but like, this is good. It is. I said to you last, I said to you, I know you're, it's coming, something's coming, but I said to you last time on the video and I saw it so many times when I was editing it, that it just, it's, it's stuck out to me like, okay, but we're, we're like for you guys, I, I was like, okay, so she got that. And that's, and that's, and that's where you want to be. And we talked about still feeling behind and understanding you feeling behind the, the eight ball. Cause I do too currently. And it's just like, I go, okay, so we're good then. I think that's how I did it. It was like, we're good then. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. I get you, but you were like, I guess, but, and it was, it was hard. It seemed to be like, to just realize the simplicity of it had nothing to do with our timetable or your timetable, but it's done. You know what? Yeah. Here's something totally relatable to that. My mom, I was talking to my mom a couple of weeks ago, I'm telling her about Alicia finish her program and her boards and everything else. And she finally got a job. And my mom knows my struggles, like, because I've always, like, complained to her and bitch and whatever it is. And she said, well, now that Alicia's working, now that she's done with school, are you finally happy? And I couldn't say yes, truthfully. Like. You know why? It, oh, do you know why? I don't. And I'm trying to figure what that out. What are you out, considering right? is why? Because I think I'm still holding on to a lot of that shit and a lot of those things in the past that happened. I think that no matter what, nothing's going to be good enough. I think maybe my threshold or my idea of something perfect is too far up. I'm still trying to figure it out. Like it's been two weeks since she said that to me. She asked me that. And I, and I gave her answer. I said, I, I don't think I'll be happy and i don't i still don't know why can you give me some insight as to why i I don't i mean i got ideas maybe but you know you mentioned two different things and one was like still holding on that's a lot a lot of what i do is i still hold on to the past that's for sure yep and then the other thing which you said was different was will i ever be happy no matter what so like you're unsatisfiable yeah. I've, I've been I've been accused of that more than once in my life. Why can't you just be satisfied? 
with those two things that you're getting thoughts from, those, are, those can be valid thoughts. Any, any of them the truth, combination of some of them the truth, likely. But I also think the science, the science behind our brains is undeniable. And I, I don't think that. I know that. I know that much. It's undeniable. But what I think in, the, it like, in something like this, where you've, you've repeated a message, a story in your mind so many times over so many years in so many situations in so many seasons and so many scenes, scenes in the kitchen with the kids and you look at her while she's making dinner and what the fuck. And, or or you're, in the, in your, you're watching a movie and you're trying to relax and she puts her leg on your, across your lap to get a foot rub and you're still bitter about thinking about the spot that you're in and you're mad at her in that even that little moment. Anything like this. Some of these are mine. Yeah, 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 yeah dude. <laughs> yes. Like anything, right? And this is the, the person that you care about most on the planet. Nobody can mess with them the way we are in our minds at that moment. If they try to, we're willing to kill. Mm -hmm. But I think the story, the science behind you, the story, the repetitive nature of a story that we tell ourselves to give explanation to an event or to give explanation to our situation, there is no one meaning we give it in context of how we see it. I get a flat tire. Dude. This is great. I prayed this morning for an opportunity to be a blessing in somebody's life. So when the tow truck guy comes with his 45 Colt in his waistband and his taco stains on his wife beater, I'm going to let him know that I'm happy you're here and God loves you. And like, that's my opportunity to bless somebody's life. We don't think in terms of chain of events. We think in terms of this is good or bad. Yeah. And I think that's a highly unhealthy state of mind because when you're thinking good or bad, you're classifying everything in those two buckets. And once that's done, now you start responding in your life based on your assessment of it being good or bad. Let me bring this back and why it even matters in this situation, because I believe with you and me and our wives, the reason we hold on to it is because we don't think enough about who I need to become to make this unit flourish. I think it's possible that for you here, it's something that you just simply repeated so long. And that was such a snag in your life for so long as I have in our life right now, building freaking blessed, our own entity that supports our life forever. This has been a 13 year journey for us, 13 and a half, 13 and a half. And it's like, Dude, that's where I say we're too good to be in this spot. We're too skinny, mm -hmm, too mm -hmm. much to offer to be to 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 not have a voice. But if I keep going on those lines, I'm just gonna keep fulfilling the frustration. It's not just you're not letting go. It's not just I keep envisioning that's taking too long, and we're it's we're not focused enough on right what is immediately in front of that I can make flourish today. It's as simple as that. And if we do that, that change is going to happen the same way we became the men we are sitting here today because that's what we did back then. We're not going to be this guy. We're going to change who this guy is. And I'm going to become the person that helps this goal come to fruition. The frustration comes when we haven't fixed the stuff that we had. That's the gap thing that we can't do on our own because we need our team. Both people got to do their job. We had it laid out in a certain way. We had our, our game plan scripted. The playbook was done. And she, she deviated. She didn't learn the playbook or she didn't stick to it or th she thought she knew better than the head coach. Yeah. And, like, I know I'm mixing analogies, but I'm, we're, we're, I think we're getting something good here. And I'm learning. That's why I'm stuttering a little bit as this is coming out because I've been praying about this, too, for a long time and, you know, Maybe there's an answer coming or something, but I think it's not a whole lot more complicated than that. In other words, what do we do? Just stop repeating that same story. Maximize what we have today. Our ladies, dude, look at me in the eyes, right? Our ladies are on our side. Who just think that in our brains, we've just conditioned our minds with a story. And just like we've changed several stories of ourselves and we've created new ones, we can do the same exact thing with the synchronicity of our marriage in, in our relationship in regards like of living 
to, to reach those goals that we have. And that's what came to me over the last couple of weeks. I bet this would be a, a two by four up against Nikki's head today because I guarantee it's, we've not been rough this week, but just busy and distant. Yeah. We're talking. It's fine. We go to bed again. Nobody's like, it's not mad. It's like, okay, you know, when it's, when, when the fire's chilled. Sure. And that's all it is. No, and, and she doesn't know that I've processed through this. Like, she, yeah, she just doesn't know. And you and I, again, like we, that's why this came up today. That's why this conversation waited until the ninth. Mm -hmm. We tried, we, I mean, we talked about doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We did. Much sooner. It always happens the way it needs to, if we don't get in the way. Perfect, right? Perfect timing. You feel like that's pretty good or like that, does that make sense? Possible? Yeah. I feel like not only is that pretty good, that was spot on. And the fact that I kind of feel shitty, not shitty. I'm thankful. Okay. I, I guess I can feel shitty because my second. pride, pride and second. ego. Yeah. For a second. Cause of my pride and ego getting in the way, but you had to remind me what it was all about. And even though I talked about it, just like we talked about it, maybe it's me. Maybe it's, I got to change. Maybe it's what can I do to change that instead of, talking about the same story over and over and over again, doing something today. What can I do to change today and then have it build and go into fruition? Like we did years ago, like, it, you know, that's what I got to do. I got to, I got to drop it. I got to get over it. I start speaking truth. Mm -hmm. That's the habit I've learned to do. I start mm -hmm. speaking what I know is true. That's what I was trying to say. What I know is true. And I'll do this out loud or I'll do it in my head. Doesn't matter. She's not against me. We're on the same team. We have verbally committed to that. We've done it over and over again. And we've committed this, like we've reminded each other this year, same team. We're going for a championship, right? What's our championship? A consistent, sustainable, great life. That's our championship. That's how we know we're winning. And she's with me. Look at what she's doing. I know she's doing this for her. So she's stronger and she's a, a more viable, stronger partner for us. Can you hear that? Hey, we're still mm -hmm. going. All right, stop talking. Love you. They've fallen in love with rollerblading this week. They're finding street hockey and rollerblading, and I, that, that makes me glad. Because uh. I get to give them some of what I think I know about that. Yeah. But she's, we're on the same team. We're committed to the same things. Our kids are good kids. We have a couple people, a few families in our life that truly care about us. We are not cursed. I am not cursed. And if I look at my last 10 years of my life, if I look at the last 20 years, Adam, look at your 20 years, bro. There's ups and downs. There's tragedy. Nikki's had to have some stuff with her kidneys. Like parents, cancer, sick. But our life, our togetherness, our energy together, what we're producing, it's always on the rise. And look at what's in front of me. I get to do this today. I'm out here in this neighborhood. I don't have to go to a job anymore. I'm able to do things from home. Like, that's, that alone, oh my gosh, I thought that wasn't possible for me. I thought I was cursed. I used to say that because I'm not meant for that world. I look at all those things that are true. And I go, no, God led us into freaking blessed. He led us there. I need to, to adapt. I had an idea of how we were starting and what was the way it was going to start. Because you don't know what something's going to turn into until you put your hands on it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how the potter produces that. You know, like, you got you to gotta touch it. You got to take a step to see what the next step is. Sure. I just have to be more open to what's right now because I was a little bit too far out again, which I know is my normal tendency. And by the end of my happy ass little run, I come home, you know, wanting to buy flowers for her, making her breakfast. And I've learned, dude, you know what I've learned as a red flag? This is something I've learned to pick up as a trigger and I'm not perfect at it. I'm just learning to do it. And I'm better than ever at it. Still, you know, still ways to go before it's second nature. Yeah. As soon as I think I'm right and, and I'm damn sure of it, 
that is my trigger to consider that I'm off track. Mm -hmm. Because Let's whenever I consider from... that the other side is right or there's something I'm missing, and then I hear, I take a second to listen, ask a question with a, a decent demeanor about myself and be honest. Hey, look, is there, I don't think there's anything I'm missing. I think I freaking have this locked in key. But listen, this is what I'm thinking. Is this real? What do you think? Is there something I'm missing? If I have the guts to verbalize that to her, dude, I don't know if it's 9.9 .9 out of 10. We get blessed. And I get the next step that helps us go the next step. The studio that you like in the lighting, I've been telling her no to take that whiteboard down for probably two years. Wow. Look at wow. what's behind me. Yeah. I did that work. She, had, she knew the truth. That's our life right there. That's the whole thing. And I want the best. I want the best result. So why wouldn't I listen? Yeah. Why wouldn't I mold myself and change myself? It's not that I'm always wrong. And it's not that she's always right. It's just more often than not. You and I, you're, you're very capable. Strong, strong-willed. We're the hunter-gatherers. We're the blunt force. They're truly masterminds, man. Yeah. Without them, we wouldn't be able to grow. Whether we wanted to or be forced to. Most of the time, I think it's forced to. But without them, we wouldn't. We wouldn't be able to evolve to become better people for us or for our families. You and I and other people who are willing to work on themselves for the sake of the unit, for the marriage, the relationship, the family, it's like we're not really being forced to. We just need a little bit of God's favor so we can take a look yeah. at what the truth is. Yeah. And, I, and that's how I see grace. And that's, that's why I know... God likes me because every step along the way in my life, no matter what I've done, I don't mean love, dude. Like I believe everybody should believe that God loves them. Like their parents love a child. But like I told my kids, not every, all parents like their kids. And right now I don't like you because <laughs> you're a jerk and you're being stupid, whatever. Right. But I also think that people would relax and be a lot more free and more comfortable with their faith even if they understood that God liked them. I think God likes me. I like, I know it. The feeling that I get at different points out of nowhere of mm -hmm. comfort and just of, of, of. Yeah. That. God doesn't talk to me with thousand and yees because I don't talk like that. Right, right. Like, Adam, you're good, bro. You're good. Look at your life. Look at where you've been. Look at the messes you've caused. Look at the ones that weren't your fault. All the fail, either the world coming at me or my own stupidity, and then it peaks, right? The chart. Every peak, I can look at all those upticks and show you something that I probably couldn't have done on my own. And a connection that came through, a phone call that happened, running into somebody at the right time. An encouraging conversation like this when you and I both have had some of these struggles in the last couple of weeks and our wives are probably like on eggshells wondering what we're thinking and what we're going through in some of these times and the more we're quiet the more what they wonder and so that gets them some sainthood yeah but it's like the when i showed up at the race i'm totally physically completely ready i couldn't wait i'm like lord carry me through don't let me drown it's on you now you led me here freaking blessed I'm doing it i'm executing every step of the way you show me as soon as it takes is once you get through my thickness and you 
break that the seal on that jar, I'm yours. And I'm always yours. But if I'm blind, I need to know. Yeah, yeah. Conversations, man. I'm glad we have real conversations. I appreciate you being so willing to do it. Yeah, dude. Because, Thank man, you for I'm being here for me to do it. I'm with you 100%. It's mutual. I'm glad it came out. I'm glad it's natural. Almost want to call it magical, dude. Because, yeah, like you look a, like you're like, I almost, bro, I'm drained. Okay. You, my soul is drained in a good way, in a great way. Okay. Because I was so excited at first, just talking, talking, and talking, and then realizing the message that I was saying, the message that you were relaying. And then ha to have it sink in, in the middle of our fucking conversation, wow, eye-opening. That was better than any fucking session with a psychiatrist, I'll tell you that. Me too. I'm just hearing this for the first time. <laughs> oh, that's so good.